The reason it is so hot here is that we are below sea level. That means that we have additional atmosphere. Death Valley is 282 feet below sea level, so there's that much more atmosphere above the valley floor. And that means it's higher pressure. And that extra bit of pressure is really what's giving us this uh, intense heat that we're experiencing today. It's like adding another layer of insulation or another blanket that's holding the heat in. By simply driving uphill, Sue reveals the tremendous insulating power of the atmosphere. It's already looking greener and, and a bit cooler up here. At Dante's view, about a mile above the valley floor, the temperature is only 86 degrees compared to the 108 down below. On Earth, the temperature typically increases by about 44 degrees Fahrenheit for every half mile you descend. On Venus, with its much deeper atmosphere than Earth, this insulating effect is taken to its extreme. It is so much hotter on Venus because the pressure is at 92 bars, uh, almost 100 times that on the Earth, and the atmosphere is much thicker, much denser, and it really holds that heat in, making Venus the incredible inferno that it is. On top of this, Venus's atmosphere is almost entirely made up of the greenhouse gas carbon dioxide. And this combines with the intense pressure to make Venus the hottest planet in the solar system. But in a universe where there are gigantic superstorms and ruby rain, could this be the mild end of weird weather across the stars? While Venus brings the heat, Earth's closest neighbor is its polar opposite. So Mars is the opposite extreme from Venus. Its atmosphere is 1 100th the pressure of Earth's, and the effect of having that uh, really low atmospheric pressure on Mars means that uh, it can't trap any of its heat. So Mars is a cold, barren desert compared to Earth or to Venus. Because of this thin atmosphere, Mars is home to some spectacular weather phenomena, like its enormous dust storms, which dwarf those on Earth. In the thin atmosphere of Mars, the dust storms can get to a very high elevation. They can reach over 12 miles into the atmosphere. And because most of Mars is a dry, dusty desert, these dust storms can cover vast expanses. In fact, it seems there's no limit to how far they can spread. Every few years, an enormous dust storm will grow until the entire planet is engulfed. Incredibly, storms like these have been shown to envelop the whole planet for as long as two months. Forecast, plenty of sunshine through today with seasonal temperatures. We should reach our normal high of about 80. Further out in the solar system, the weather gets even wilder. It's another fine sunny day in Pasadena, home of NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Andrew Ingersoll is the father of extraterrestrial meteorology. He's come to the Deep Space Operations Center. It's mission control for the small fleet of spacecraft that NASA has sent to explore the outer reaches of the solar system. Andy has worked on all these missions. So we've had a whole series of spacecraft visiting the giant planets. The first the big one was Voyager in the 70s, which zoomed past all the giant planets. Then there was Galileo. Then Cassini, which has been in orbit around Saturn for 10 years. And now we have Juno in orbit around Jupiter. The spacecraft have given us an unprecedented view of the weather on these planets. The outer planets are big balls of gas and that makes a huge difference in the weather. So there's lots of room for weather 
And because you don't have continents, you don't have mountains for the winds to rub against. And there's nothing to control the uh, weather the way the continents partly control our weather. This means that these planets have storms on an entirely different scale to ours. And the most famous storm of all is Jupiter's Great Red Spot. The Great Red Spot is a huge storm in Jupiter's atmosphere. You could put two Earths inside the red spot, and the winds going around the periphery of the red spot are about three times the speed of the Earth's jet streams. With winds whipping around at about 400 miles per hour and releasing so much energy that it heats the atmosphere above it to over 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit, the red spot has been raging for as long as we on Earth have been able to observe Jupiter. Shortly after Galileo built the first telescope, uh, people were using these primitive telescopes to look at Jupiter, and they saw this storm. And uh, it's apparently been there ever since, which is remarkable compared with Earth storms. The red spot has been there for over 350 years, and that makes it the longest living storm that we know of. Jupiter may have the longest lasting storm, but it's Saturn, the next gas giant, that is home to the largest and most powerful storm ever seen in the solar system. And in 2010, the Cassini spacecraft is there to see it. Saturn, of course, is a spectacular sight because of the rings. And it's also rather boring as far as the weather is concerned. It, it's a, a bland thing. But every now and then, 20, 30 years, Saturn erupts with a giant storm. And Cassini was fortunate to be orbiting Saturn at the time of one of these eruptions. What happened was on December 5th, 2010, the radio uh, receiver on Cassini started picking up the radio signal of lightning. And on the same day, the camera saw a little storm up in the northern hemisphere of Saturn. By January, it had developed into a fair-sized thing, and then we watched it for six months. During that time, the huge storm grew and wrapped itself around the entire planet, covering over one and a half billion square miles until its head caught up with its tail. Driven by winds going around 1,100 miles per hour with huge lightning flashes 10,000 times stronger than those we get on Earth. It's very funny. Jupiter has these very long-lived storms, but Saturn has these very violent storms. We don't fully understand why there's this difference in the weather between Jupiter and Saturn. Whether it's duration or size, the storms on both these planets dwarf those on Earth. However, because they receive far less heat from the sun than the Earth does, something else is also powering their weather. The weather on Jupiter and Saturn comes from two sources. One is the sun, as on Earth, and the other is the internal heat left over from when the planets formed. It's this internal heat trying to escape through their deep atmospheres that makes the gas planets so tumultuous. 